twos was playing a lot of Wu Shang for a while, and that's right. when he really started to step up in not only ones, especially when you want DreamHack Valencia with the Shang, but especially in twos as well with that Wu Shang pick. Extremely safe signature kit, has that explosive offstage gameplay coming out from the gauntlets that we've known from Godly, uh -huh. uh, Godly even back when he played on the Rayman as well. So I've been interested to see how this Kai is kind of working so far, which he's in the winner's side top eight for sure. It's been working pretty well. I'm interested, oh, okay, oh, well, maybe yikes. not great to start things out, but I was gonna say, I'm pretty interested as well because all of my studying material of Godly and Blaze was the exact team composition you mentioned, Sparky. So this has thrown me for a pretty significant loop. I'm wondering how the bow specifically comes into effect in these 2v2s. Okay, Godly out of resources, touches down. Here we go. Blaze coming off the right side, but Godly, yeah, playing defense really, really good right there. Deterring both doesn't even matter as Blaze goes down right there. Almost a full stock lead for Blue. He was kind of stuck on the wall doing a whole lot of nothing. Like, Blaze got hit, and I think he, he made the conscious choice to, like, not hit his teammate with, like, a spear neutral right. light, which would just interrupt the, uh, the like, momentum and velocity towards the edge. Ooh. Or a weapon toss, Godly getting thrown over towards the edge, almost on his final stock yeah. here. We're, like, less than a minute 15 into this game, and, oh, that Kaya defense is still coming through. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Saphir and Jakey now playing the right side right there. Target swap is excellent there from Jakey. Oh, the two for one, not quite. Godly just going over to the edge, and they're not messing with him. That's something Saphir was doing while Jakey was putting pressure on the blaze. Is like Saphir was forcing Godly to sit over on the edge. He was kind of going back yeah. and forth, like, oh, you want to press up and help your teammate? No, get over on the wall. But he's still there as a presence in case Jakey gets a solid setup and Saphir is there close enough to be able to respond in time. So great zoning defense coming out from Saphir while he was letting Jakey just go to work. As you say, Godly falls to last stock right there. Blaze fighting his way out of the 2v1. Really, really good stuff. Let's see what kind of sandwich comes in right here. Nothing to be had. Jakey again just fighting his way back. But in the mix of everything, Saphir loses his stock. Oh, He's wow. going to confirm it for sure. Gauntlet side airs to move himself over to the edge, and he gets back yeah. off of that because Saphir came in, relieved that pressure that Godly was putting out, and Jakey, this is one of the reasons you play Tesca. That signature kit, essentially light attacks. Okay. Gives you so much control over the, the battlefield, over the gameplay. You can do it over on the edge. You definitely can do it over on the wall. You have dunks. You have so many tools when you are the Tesca user. Yeah, really great conversions out of blue right now. Godly facing down a couple of non-believers coming through. This is a hard, hard sell. Even as Jakey falls right there, it is one stock apiece for our blue team. The team combos will be coming in through, and it might be okay. the end of game one, but Godly with a little bit of action now. Okay. And you saw the immediate chase dodge down instead of going for the side air or the recovery true combo follow-up because he was worried about the other member of the blue team. They didn't actually push on to him. I think they're giving him a lot of respect here, as of course they should. A lot of respect right here, yeah. Caught in the, a little bit of a blind spot there for both of the blue team. Godly picks up the spear now. Let's see what happens. Wow, okay, Alley Oop doesn't get there. Little bit slow on that. Of course, that Axe Neutral Light does have a little bit of a vertical component to its force, and they're going to take out Godly. Jakey and Saphir take game one, and yeah. that was a rough game for Blaze. And I, I really like you what you pointed out on how potent the Tesca pick is for this team composition. I mean, they Godly really made him work for it at the end right there, but oh my gosh, especially when Red Team had a lot of stocks to play with, they just melted away. I see a Tesco on the field. I'm very, very, very scared. Uh, we'll see in South America this weekend. We'll probably see Wes play some Tesca as well. And like Wes is a great player. Wes has always been a great player. But Wes on the Tesca is a different breed. There's so well, there, there, there are like a handful of Tesca players where it's just like it feels like there's almost nothing you can do to right. win. Godly's hoping he figured out what to do to win, which is swapping over onto that Taros, another legend in the game that is just infamous for being able to take stock so early a very high strength legend yep. with two heavy weapons so the damage output is huge but Jakey Jakey Hang just took out Jakey just took out Godly <laughs> he and said, he turned around and put the pressure on the blades he said oh you switching okay to the blast zone you go let's see he said Godly all now. characters in Brawlhalla are the same size the silhouette <laughs> changing means nothing for me okay Godly playing the left side right here Jakey a little bit aggressive coming in with that side light not picking up the weapon there. Yeah, wanting to stay on boots is Jakey. Nice, good team combo right there. Not going to amount to too, too much, but blue, both blue team members in the red. 
Saphir will go down first. Jakey soon to follow, not quite. Still living, of course, that neutral signature is going to bounce him off the stage. Even though it has a ton of force, bouncing off the stage is going to take away a lot of the velocity and momentum. So it's going to mean to later KOs more damage that has to be built up or a different move that doesn't bounce right. your team off okay. the stage. He picked up both in that oh as well. Oh my gosh. And okay. the side light side air because there was no dodge for Godly. He didn't have that in his in-air movement economy. He gets caught by the side light side air. Yeah, what great coverage there too. Jakey going for the GC into what looked like a signature to me right there. And then Saphir just playing on the back end being like, I will cover your tracks no matter what. Okay, the axes are swinging. Yeah, they be doing stuff. Okay. Wow, reversal there from Jakey as well. Really good stuff. But Godly now playing on the juggles. That's Signature's ability to pick up and dunk on the edge. The dunk is not as potent as, like, a Mordex dunk or, like, a Hattori Sword neutral Signature dunk or an Asuri dunk or anything like that. But it's still so effective on the edge. You can set up for the follow-up. I'm going to say that Jakey hit his boy out of the way so he didn't get hit by that ground pound that came from Blaze. I'm hitting you to save you yes. as I get a KO off the top right there onto Blaze. Again, a lead, kind of, but Jakey will fall any second now as he's damages in the red. We also got to worry about Godly, though. Jakey sent down. Okay, what 2v1 can happen here as the respawn comes through from Jakey? It's Saphir off stage, but Jakey, Jakey comes Q, off the right side right there. What a play. Walt, I didn't even see him coming in, man. My eyes were glued to Godly and not right behind him. And it's now Blaze in the 1v2 against Jakey and Saphir. Saphir's going to just completely let Jakey take the lead here. His 1v1 performances have been incredible so far. <laughs> Blaze playing the 1v2 very appropriately, though. Gets Jakey offstage on the left side, immediately target swaps. I love it. Oh, there's the recovery, yep. Recovery going to not KO off the top quite yet. Next one is looking real close. Oh, here as you approach right <laughs> damage. Dude, he's so good. Game two. Oh, oh my gosh. Guy. Would you would you say this is an upset? Oh, absolutely. Like, it's 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 Godly, the 2v2 the world champion. Yeah. Who teamed up with a North American player, so they had limited practice time and they came through and won the world championship. Blaze, at one point, was considered to be like the best 2v2 player going, not just in EU, mm -hmm. but in the entire world, while Blaze and Akno were running every single tournament, running everybody's bags in EU. Ooh. And then Jakey and Saphir here, I don't know, maybe, maybe we just have like oil and water with Godly <laughs> and Blaze, yeah. and like, like water's great, we need it to live. Oil is also very important. That's yeah, a healthy fat, sure. So <laughs> when, you, like, when you put those two together, you'd think that, oh, yeah, they're going to mix. No, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any emulsifying tool Whew. to turn the oil and water into a, in, in emulsion. Maybe they just need to find the emulsifying they need tool. To they, need a, they need a hand blender. Is it another character? I see the doll sim coming in now for Godly instead. Now we are back over to some classic Godly. This is some Godly that I feel much more comfortable with. Also classic Blaze coming through with the Bryn pick as well. Let's see if a little change in the tempo is what the red team needs to stay alive in winner's side top eight. But oh my gosh, we have been singing the praises of Jakey here and Saphir as well. What good team combinations they've been having so far, especially when we see Jakey on those boots. Okay. Last game, both Jakey and Saphir had 50% or higher signature accuracy, wow. which like is huge, especially when you're Jakey, hitting neutral signatures all over the place, grabbing your opponent with your legs and throwing them back towards your teammate or towards the blast zone. Jakey's boots have been amazing. There you go, yet another one he picked up, and it's a game changer because it leads to the KO, and then also Godly went there to help his teammate. He ended up falling as well. Red damage though for both the blue team means they're just one team combo away from evening this one right back up. Godly finds the KO off the top. It's gonna be a weapon throw off the right side there from Blaze. Don't want to extend too, too much, but Saphir out of resources. Here we go. Saphir knew exactly how much he had, so he stayed deep enough in the push-off column rather than going immediately over to that wall, kind of tunnel visioning over to that wall, which is what Godly thought he was going to do and what Godly wanted him to do. He also threw that weapon toss out, kind of giving him a little bit of uh, space, throwing out some type of hitbox, Ooh. zone out his opponent. That side air from uh, Godly, so good at setting up the alley-oop for Blaze, but wasn't going to amount to too, more, too much more damage here. Jakey approaches the red. Offstage is Saphir. Now Godly playing all here, trying to edge guard, not going to get too much. And they're back, splitting back into the 2v1s right here. Now it's Godly edge guarding. Blaze looking to find his way in, but he can't really get too much of an opening. 
The edge guards have been limited so far for Godly and Blaze. Definitely in, in terms of like the edge guarding game between these two teams, it's Saphir and Jakey all day. But this game, things are definitely changing. The tides are turning, and the raw neutral is starting to be controlled more and more by Godly and Blaze. Okay, Blaze recovering high on stage. Godly smacks down with the ground pound. Not going to get too much just there. Blaze will fall off the top. It's going to be last. Oh, no, no. Last stock for Blaze. Excuse me. Godly and Orange, though, it's looking a little bit dicey. You gotta get this stock off Saphir. Oh, I thought he was gonna do it again, where he hits the inlight onto Godly and then immediately goes for the D light on Blaze. He did that Ooh. once, then he hit the inlight on Godly again. Blaze was in there in enough time to where that D light wasn't able to come out quickly from Saphir's axe. Okay. Blaze overextending a little bit with recovery right there. Jakey just looking for a spot to land. Has to spend the jump right there, but Godly's all over it. There's the last stock for Jakey. That's huge. Saphir was doing a great job of juggling a member of the red team up high with the neutral airs, but it wasn't enough. Now he finds himself in the 1v2. There's the dodge gone. Instant pickup from the GC in light from Godly. d -Sig over the edge, or is he just going to be careful? Saphir didn't have enough to get back, and Godly gave him plenty of space. Didn't want to give him the free hit where you get the chase dodge up and get back over to the wall or back onto the main platform. Maybe all it took was just going back to your roots for just a moment, you know? Open the memory book, crack open the yearbook, take a look and say, you know, remember when we did that? We really did that. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I wanted from him. I, I, I he, he's a great player. He can play a lot of different characters at uh, a level that I could only dream of. But I love to see the Dalsim, the Rayman crossover coming over from Godly. I also love to see the Wushong because his gauntlets are so good. And then whatever other weapon, Spear also, of course, very strong in the meta. Godly's Spear is solid. Of course, the side signature on that Spear is such a valuable tool. But of course, Axe is also an extremely valuable tool, a very right. strong tool, a very meta tool here, which is why you see uh, everybody but Jakey having an Axe legend on the screen. Okay. Godly covers the right side there. Jakey did look like he touched down, but I think he's going to run this out of resources scary, and dude. his first stock as well. Godly just so on top of it. Now that's because several reasons. Of course, Axe on the ground pound has that like 360 degree right. hitbox that goes around you. And if you hit the bottom side of it, it'll spike straight down. He also is able to cover basically all of the wall on Demon Island because those walls are so teeny tiny. So he had a lot of coverage, both from his weapon and the map. Okay, Blaze looking to return the stage, touches the ground right there. Somehow the reversal comes through onto Saphir, but the action is staying on this left side. Ooh, Godly, Godly once again with the ground pound, really good stuff. Allows Blaze, Blaze to comes take back over in from too. there. One more jump up, it's gonna be a KO off the top instead. What good team synergy from Red we're getting, Sparky? I thought that they were like almost kind of dropping the edge guard there because Godly didn't immediately throw his weapon down to interrupt the Lance recovery because you crank it back the longer you hold it the further you go so you it's it's super telegraphed as there is a KO off the top from Jakey but it's super telegraphed so all you got to do is toss your weapon down there and completely right. interrupt everything but then you saw Blaze immediately rotate over Okay, Blaze took a lot of damage Ooh, right there. Scary. Looking for the chase dodge after that first confirm. Gonna pick up the weapon as well. It's a double KO for Red. We might be looking at a game five. I'm thinking you are correct with that. And if I was a betting man, which I'm not, because as we learned on the pre-show, gambling is bad and the house always wins. I mean, I don't know if I'm gambling on that Plinko board. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not doing that. The house always wins and the house is toast. <laughs> and the house is Plinko boards, that's not. But here we go. Okay, great combo there. Sandwiching Saphir is blazing godly. Really good stuff. Doesn't even mind that Blaze hits Godly on the way up with that recovery. Not going to be too much damage. After that, Blaze will finally fall, though. But this is huge damage onto Jakey. We're seeing so much Axe gameplay. And I know that sounds silly, but like it's just a lot of in lights, a lot of D lights, yeah. a lot of side lights, maybe hoping for the Sair or the side light in the true combo neutral air. Neutral air juggles. Okay. Cover in the ledge right there. All right, a little bit mixed up. <laughs> right, guys, figure it out. Come on, man. It's like, we can, we're going to win, right? <laughs> we're going to, it's fine. Everything's okay. All right, there, there we, go. we go. Game five, we're getting on the board here, Sparky. What do you think? I, I mean, I was going to say, like, okay, guys, figure it out. We have a world champion, and we have one of the best QB2 players to, like, ever do it. We, should, we shouldn't be hitting each other this much. I think the rhythm has moved back into Godly and Blaze's side. I think they have the momentum on their side. I don't think it's going to be a stomp by any means, because Jakey and Saphir have really been showing us something. 
Uh, they did ban Demon Island, so we, okay, we're going to Miami Dome. So we're okay. going to trade out no soft platforms. We're not even grabbing just one soft platform that we saw on like Fortress of Lions or Apocalypse, but we're going to Miami Dome. So we have two high soft platforms. All right. That's one of the reasons I personally like this stage so much is the higher soft platforms. Three, so it doesn't feel claustrophobic one, above my head. Okay. Let's see if blue team can tighten it up right here in time to stay alive in the winner's bracket. It's game five right here. Godly and Blaze switching it up right here. Or reskinning it at least, but. Oh, wow, okay. Nice little quick combo, getting everyone into about yellowish orange range. Like to see it, yeah, and I think the, the comment that you had pointed out earlier, Sparky, about just there being a lot more space by virtue of that platform has just come in huge already. Yeah, so it feels like there are like kind of two zones of gameplay. And of course, there's like the left and the right edge as well. But like on the main platform, you have between main stage and soft plat, and then you have soft plat and above. Uh -huh. And so if you have strong vertical KO tools, you can extend your regular neutral gameplay Ooh. up to the soft platforms, and all of a sudden you're picking up Blaster's Delight Recovery right. or Spear Delight Recovery, and you're getting those KOs so much earlier because your uh, initial height is already extended much higher up from those soft platforms. As we see a checkerboard pattern on the top right of the screen. One stock has been taken from Blaze and one stock has been taken from Jakey. Godly so patient there on the left side, just does not want to run in, get scooped up right there. One more might do it. So again, the positions have swapped. Godly takes back end right here. What's going to be an edge guard opportunity? Nothing. Just allows Saphir to come right on back and it might be a stock trade right here, but no, Jakey doesn't want to extend onto it. And Blaze was just right there, just like we saw on Demon Island after Godly like disengaged from the edge guard while the recovery was being charged up on the left. Then Blaze immediately came in and hit the axe down air. Yeah. Godly got hit away, but then Blaze was there right in to hit an axe neutral light and get the KO. So the follow up, even the single hit follow ups from Blaze are huge. Yeah. All of this off Blaze just reading dodges there out of Saphir. He is in your head, Saphir. Get something going. Another side air follow up from Blaze. Goes for the ground pound, isn't quite low enough. Saphir was playing too low on that wall to get hit by that. There's the down air again, sending him over to the edge. I think he inlighted the wrong way. That was a nice double pickup from Saphir. Red team was split for just a moment. All of a sudden, they regroup. All right, Jakey playing a little bit caught in the middle right there between Godly and Blaze. How can he find an opener right here? Is it going to come off the back of Saphir with the down air right there? Not going to happen just yet, but the KO will be found onto Blaze as he falls to last. That was a nice little like relay race where like Ooh. a member of blue hit a member of red, then a member of red punished a member of blue, and then a member of blue punished a second member of red, one right after the other. It's really just a revolutionary war type yes. of combat, right? You take your turn, I take my turn, <laughs> and then we'll just act like gentlemen from here on out. That's crazy that we did that. We were, <laughs> that's wild, dude. That's how they used to do that back then. All right, then. now it's my turn. I'm going to reload. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> All right, let's see. Red team is, has fallen to last stock right here, so playing it a little bit careful. Getting that stock off of Jakey. Oh, Jakey's gonna be huge, but getting pieced up with the legs coming through. That was a tough spot for Jakey because he had to make like split second decisions of I have an opponent, but I also have a teammate in this. So what do I do? What's the more valuable thing? Do I disengage and risk not putting damage onto the opponent? Because okay. oh, this is, this is massive. Godly, of course, no nice. it blaze covering as well. It's gonna force the 2v1. Now Jakey has to put the team on his back to win this one. Blaze's like single move follow-ups have been so strong as they set up this combo here. Just got Jakey into the orange, so it wasn't completely a zero to knockout there. Oh, we kind of beefed that one a little bit. Jakey went up into the air, of course. The side signature from Blaze's spear rides right along that ground, and he was a little bit slow with it. Okay. Jakey's so careful. Any button press is a commitment right here, but you need to find the opening. It's looking like Godly's juicy. Oh, it, it might not matter, but nice. the weapon throw is going to close the door on that one. A reverse 3-0 for Godly and Blaze. The harpoon toss from Blaze to clutch that one out, also doing the most damage in the game, also tying for the most KOs picked up in the game, of course, tying with Saphir on the other team. But four KOs, 587 damage. Godly and Blaze, like, they figured it out.